Good morning. It's morning for me, so good morning. Um, I woke up there today, which is not normal. I don't usually wake up in tents, and that is because yesterday my brother and I drove seven and a half hours to get here, which is the outside of the rim of the south rim of the Grand Canyon. The reason I'm here, apart from this being just like, you know, the best place ever, is because this time of year the Grand Canyon has their annual star party. Um, and I really wanted to share with you guys what a star party is, what it looks like, who's involved, how it goes, and I could not think of a better place to do that than like the coolest place for a star party in the universe. So um, I'm gonna head over and we'll find out what a star party is. So let's go do that. Basically a bunch of amateur astronomers, sometimes professional astronomers, uh, who get together in a dark skies location and just do their thing with the telescopes. They'll all look at different things, they'll look up at the sky and see what they want to see. Astronomy clubs will do public star parties where they invite uh, people in the community to come and look in the telescopes and see what's out there and teach about the sky. I talked to Jim, who's the coordinator for the event, about a little bit about what he does there, a little bit about star parties, and he was really cool, so this is him. Okay, so I'm here with Jim O'Connor, who is the coordinator for the South Rim Star Party. Um, how long have you been doing it? I've been, uh, I've been participating for 14 years now, and I've been the coordinator for, this is my eighth year coordinator. Eighth year. And most of the astronomers here at the event are from the Tucson Amateur Astronomy Association. No, no? that's the secret. Really? The secret is less than 15% are. Wow. We have people who come here, who've been coming here for over 20 years, some of them. It's a widespread audience, widespread. and our club is the sponsor because it was our, it was Dean Kettleson. He's the one who started this idea and because he set up a telescope. It was his and his, uh, his late wife Vicky's first anniversary. And they went and set up, a, they came up here to visit, they set up a telescope, and every place they did around the rim to look at the rim and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, they tra attracted a crowd. So we went to the park service and he says, I think we ought to maybe start something up. So the next year they did, the official, the first year of the Grand, the Grand Canyon Star Party with four astronomers. And so now we've grown, so we'll have about 120 here during the week. So star parties in general? Like, a lot of them are local, a lot of them mm -hmm. are in big cities. This is like one of the biggest ones. This um, will be about the biggest one for outreach to the public. Most star parties are for astronomers only. Uh, this is different. The reason we do this is the phrase I use for it is environmental awareness. Mm -hmm. We're trying to increase the environmental awareness of the general public who comes through here for their home universe. This is their universe and they haven't looked, they haven't thought to look up, they haven't had a reason to. So what we try to do is say, hey, uh, half the park is after dark. You've got a great universe you're part of. Let's show you some of it. At a public star party, what do you think are some of the rules both for astronomers and for guests coming? For the astronomers, they're not at home, so they can't set it up like a campsite. You're going to have 35 to 50 of your closest friends constantly in line at your telescope, and all you're showing them is what's in the eyepiece. Don't need no stinking guidebooks. <laughs> you just go to something you really like and explain it, teach it make them aware of it. The other is get in here early, unpack your vehicle early, get over there and get parked so you're not in the way of people and not a traffic hazard. For the public, night is a lot different than day. So we have those red rope lights out there for them to follow until they get to that corner. After that, red lights only back here. And the reason for that is the performance of your eyes. Second, look with your eyes, not with your hands. It's really normal for human beings to bring what they're looking at, the knowledge, to their head where they want to put the knowledge. Not like that with a telescope. You have to bring your head to the eyepiece. And the other rule is fix the fuzzies. We all are human beings with our own prescriptions for our eyes. We all have unique eyes. The astronomer adjusts it for his perspective. For me, if I was using an eyepiece in there, I'd take my glasses off. Now I'm 2190, and I got it perfectly in focus for me. But a telescope is a monocle. It has to be working at the prescription of the individual who looks in there. So if you hear four people say that's the greatest image they ever saw, but you look in and it looks like a thumbprint on your eyeball, ask the astronomer for help with fixing the fuzzies. So that's the rules. Red lights, fix the fuzzies, uh, look with your eyes, not with your hands. So there's obviously a lot of people coming to set up telescopes and there's a lot of people coming to see them. 
what do you think is like the biggest why of why that happens and what the community impact of something that's like why is? I got into this that's that's the greatest question about mm -hmm. this because if we have anywhere from 800 to 1500 people come through here in a night why why hiking around this place doing all the visitor kind of things around here uh, it's a long day and now it's hot and they're dehydrated. Why do they actually take the time to come out here instead of being in their tent or their lodge room? And it turned out what I found out that it's, it's a cultural uh, factor of humanity. All cultures are drawn to the night sky. If we go back to the 40s or back to when the internet started, the only knowledge we got was what we got out of the sky. And so it became a cultural imperative. Cultures come up with reasons that the sky, what they see in the sky, help them with their day-to-day uh, -day life, their understanding of life. Because it's a human need to understand what's, what's going on around them and possibly predict the future. So you find the cultures have rules about the skies that fit them. So we look up at the sky because we're called to it. It's a genetic kind of thing. We come out here, we look up at the sky, but since there's been television and the internet, um, we haven't culturally ganged up and gotten the rules. So it's a big difference from a long time ago when it was a campfire, as the campfire burned down, you see the sky, the tribal elders would teach you what you're supposed to know about it, and it rotates through the year for what's up there, and it teaches lessons. And so that's why people show up here. It's a calling. They're called to it. It's only after they get there. I'm giving the booster shot.